Things are heating up in Israel, as controversial plans are afoot for the annexation of the West Bank. Hello, this is Matt Davies, and together we'll look at recent events and their significance in relation to the Bible prophecy. In the 6th century BC, the prophet Ezekiel was inspired by God to utter a prophecy about the people and the land of Israel. In chapter 33, and at verse 28 of the prophecy of Ezekiel in the Bible, he writes, For I will lay the land most desolate, and the pomp of her strength shall cease, and the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, that none shall pass through. Then shall they know that I am the Lord, when I have laid the land most desolate, because of all their abominations which they have committed. These mountains of Israel are in the centre of the land of Israel, in the territory known today as the West Bank, but then it was known as Judea and Samaria. Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, is located in these very mountains. However, the desolation of these mountains and the dispersion of Israel was not to be a permanent state of affairs, the prophecy tells us. Later in Ezekiel 34 and verse 13 and 14, we read, And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. It is remarkable then that we have seen this taking place. The Jews have returned to their land after being scattered from their land by various ancient nations, most notably the Romans in AD 70. And for 2,000 years they wandered around with no homeland. In 1948 the state of Israel was born. And in 1967, Israel obtained control over this area, and it was then called the West Bank. Since then, Jews have been returning to their land. In Ezekiel 36 and verse 8, we have another prophecy of the mountains of Israel. We read there, But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you and I will turn unto you and ye shall be tilled and sown and I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. And the cities shall be inhabited and the wastes shall be builded and I will multiply upon you man and beast and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates and will do better unto you than at your beginnings and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. It is interesting to note then that since the Jews have been returning, they have been farming this very land on the mountains of Israel, turning it from desert wastelands into agricultural paradises, showing amazing yields of crops. Later, still in the prophecy of Ezekiel, we read in chapter 38 of a prophecy of our times. The time period when the Jews have returned to their ancient homeland of Israel after a period of time in dispersion amongst the nations. The prophet tells us that Israel will be invaded at this time. And this is one of the things that he says in Ezekiel 
38, from verse 8. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always a waste. But it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. This chapter explains that although the people of Israel are to be regathered, an invading force described in verses 1 to 7 will come against these mountains of Israel and the people that are on them. The ancient names listed of the invading force indicate that it will be made up of the peoples of Russia, Europe, Iran and the Turkic nations as well as nations of North Africa. It is at this time that we read that God acts. And by piecing together this prophecy with others that speak of this great crisis, we understand that it is at this point, the point of the invasion, that the Lord Jesus Christ will appear and save God's people of Israel. He will establish then God's kingdom on the earth, which will be a worldwide kingdom and it will reign for a thousand years. Now, it is fascinating to consider these prophecies uttered 2,600 years ago and the fact that they depict the situation that we see right now in the Middle East today. In 1967, when the Israeli army took over the West Bank area from Jordan, the international community never recognised this as a legitimate conquest. On the other hand, this was the ancient homeland of the Jewish people. And they began to build settlements in this area amongst the so-called Palestinian peoples who had previously been part of the Jordanian-controlled territory. The international community is in uproar about these settlements and the continued building of Israel. In their eyes, this is, an Ill this is illegal because the United Nations never recognised this territory as being owned by Israel. And so it uses the term the occupied territory. Many attempts over the years have been tried to broker a peace between Israel, the Palestinians and the nations of the world. Most of the world favoured a two-state solution which allocates some land to Arabs and some to Jews. But this has been rejected by the Arabs and also some of the Jews. But incidentally, this was already something which was attempted. Originally, in the time of the British Mandate, the area that was to the east of the Jordan was given to the Arabs. And the idea was that the territory to the west of the Jordan was to be given to the Jews. This, however, was never accepted. After years of failed peace attempts, the US President Donald Trump produced a radically new peace plan earlier this year in January. Within this plan, it proposed that Israel annexed around a third of the West Bank territory, giving the further two-thirds to the Palestinian peoples, and it was rejected by the Palestinians and most of the rest of the Western world. Not to be deterred, though, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he would start the process of annexing parts of the West Bank, starting on July the 1st. However, the US had indicated they believed that this was too fast, and so the Israelis should slow the process down. And this, of course, brought a difficult and brings a difficult situation for the Israelis. America are the only major power that would be in a position to support this move, and there are US elections in November. So if Donald Trump does not get re-elected, this window of opportunity for annexation and potential peace might not uh, might, might begin to disappear. Now, the 1st of July actually came and went, and no annexation took place. No activity for annexation was deployed by the Israelis. 
the Jerusalem Post ran an article entitled, quote, Four Reasons Why Israeli Annexation Is Not Happening on July the 1st, end quote. And in it, they listed these reasons. One, the US team is uneasy. Two, Gantz, who is the leader of a faction of Netanyahu's coalition government, is uneasy. Three, the Palestinians could be willing to talk if annexation is, uh, is, is off the table. And four, the coronavirus is raging in Israel. Now, this last point of the coronavirus is a very interesting point indeed. The article goes on to explain, quote, In the early days of the virus, Netanyahu and his government were praised for their quick and effective quarantine, quarantine shutdown. In recent weeks, however, Israel has relaxed restrictions and reopened workplaces and schools and seen a spike in COVID-19 cases. On Tuesday, the health minister confirmed over 700 new cases that had been identified in the past 24 hours, the second highest amount recorded in a day there since the start of the pandemic. Israeli reports claim that the ministry is pushing for curfews in dozens of cities to curb the spread of the disease. End quote. In the meantime, warnings have been coming in thick and fast. On Wednesday the 7th, Newsweek ran a story entitled, quote, Iran proxies threaten Israel over evil West Bank annexation plan, end quote. In it, they report that Hamas in the Gaza Strip and the Lebanese Hezbollah militant group had called for Muslim nations to unify against, Israel, uh, against the Israeli plan. On Friday the 10th of July, the Middle East Monitor posted an article entitled, quote, Fatah leader, Israel, annexation plan is a declaration of war, end quote. Fatah was formerly known as the Palestinian National Liberation Movement and is a Palestinian nationalist party. Also on Friday the 10th, Al Jazeera ran a story entitled, quote, Francis Macron asks Israel to drop West Bank annexation plans, end quote. It states, quote, the French president's office said in a statement on Friday that Macron on Thursday emphasized that such a move would contravene international law and jeopardize the possibility of a two-state solution as the basis of a fair and lasting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. The foreign ministries of France and Germany, along with those of Egypt and Jordan, the only Arab states to have peace deals with Israel, warned this week that any annexation could have consequences for relations, end quote. Now, all these things are very interesting to the student of Bible prophecy. We are witnessing the tensions outlined in the prophecy that Ezekiel had spoken and which will bubble over into that great crisis which will see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to the earth. The problem with the West Bank has no doubt been orchestrated by God and his angels to bring about the situation depicted by his prophets. It will eventually bring the nations down onto the mountains of Israel against the people of Israel. Another prophet, Joel, was inspired to say this in Joel chapter 3 in verses 1 and 2. Behold, in those days and in at that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, and we've seen that in the return of the Jews from their captivity. He goes on to, to say that God says, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat or the valley of judgment and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. The dividing of the land and the settlements on the mountains of Israel are all being discussed today. And they were predicted to be the sources of conflict in the Bible 2,600 years ago. And what about the coronavirus in Israel? Well, in Ezekiel 38, we have something very interesting about the time after God acts to save his people from the invasion. In verse 22, it states, And I will plead against him, that's the invading force, with pestilence 
and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon many people that are with him an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Did you notice there the word pestilence? It means a plague or a disease. Could this have something to do with the coronavirus, we wonder? We will wait and we will see. However, one thing we know is that we are right on the verge of seeing these prophecies unfold. We must prepare then for the return of Messiah and for the restoration of the kingdom of God on earth when the Lord Jesus Christ will sit on the throne of his father David in Jerusalem. It is for this coming kingdom that followers of the Lord Jesus Christ have been taught to pray for in what is known as the Lord's Prayer, recorded in Matthew 6, where Jesus tells us to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And this model example prayer ends like this, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This has been Matt Davies. Join us again next week as we watch the final times of the Gentiles draw to an end in the Bible in the news.